describe Euler's discovery about the partition numbers, we need to go back a few thousand years to the time of ancient Greece. The Greeks loved to play with number theory, and they had a whole notion of figurate numbers. That is, if I could arrange pebbles in particular designs, the numbers that make those designs were called the figurate numbers. For example, the triangle numbers. It could be one pebble, not very exciting, but I take one pebble plus two pebbles, that makes a triangle. And one pebble plus two pebbles plus three pebbles makes a triangle as well, the next one up, and so on. So I can make these triangular designs, and the number of pebbles in each design is called a triangle number. For example, the first one is one, the next one is one plus two is three, is the second triangular number. One plus two plus three is six. One plus two plus three plus four, 10. And if you check, it's 15, 21, 28, 36, and so on. They're known as the triangle numbers. I can also have the square numbers, as you can probably guess, it's a similar design. Whoops. One dot. Four dots make a square. Nine dots make the next square number. And 16 dots make the next square number, and so on. And there we have 1, 4, 9, 16, what we call the square numbers. Uh, it's actually not too hard to find a form for the square numbers. Everyone, I think, would say that the nth square number is n squared. It is actually possible to find a form for the triangle numbers as well. And the thing to note for that is that if I take a triangle, uh, I'll do it in this space, I'll take the fourth one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, and 1. They have arranged them in a right triangle this time. But if I put that with another right triangle of the same size, 1 dot, plus 2 dots, plus 3 dots, plus 4 dots, I see that the fourth triangle number, which I'll call T4, is actually half a rectangle. And how high is the rectangle? It's four high and it's five wide. So the fourth triangle number is actually half of four times five. Now that's one very specific example, but the same principle can apply to any size triangle number and we can actually show that the nth triangle number is one half n times n plus one. The n coming from the width of the original triangle, n plus one, because it's the width of the second triangle plus one more dot. Great, so there's the triangular numbers, the square numbers, but the Greeks, of course, went further, and they went to the pentagonal numbers. And it was the pentagonal numbers that have this very strange connection to the partition numbers, as Euler showed. So, to get the pentag uh, pentagonal numbers going, I need to clean my board. Just give me a moment, please. Okay, clean board, but with some triangle numbers on it. Um, I'm going to construct the square numbers again, but in a different way. I'm going to do something a little bit strange. I'm going to start with a single dot for the first square number, but let me just draw a couple of guiding lines. Because I can think of the next square number as a triangle plus a triangle glued to it. There's my four dots. Uh, the next square number, nine dots, I can create the third triangle number and the third triangle number glued to it. And there is actually an array of three by three array of dots. That's, that's the uh, third square number and so on. To get the uh, next square number, I can think of that's two triangles glued together. So if you'd like, I could say that the nth square number is actually two triangles, two triangle numbers, except these guys were double counted. And if I've done n rows, that means I've double counted n dots. So I need to subtract n from that formula. And to check ourselves, in the previous little section, we said the nth triangle number is 1 half n times n plus 1 minus n. What would I do if I got that? The 2's cancel, that's n squared plus n minus n. That's just n squared. That is indeed the nth square number. So algebraically, I can prove this. But geometrically, I can see that a square is really two triangles glued together. But this is the key to figure out how to go to the next level up on these figure it numbers. So if a square is two triangles, I guess the next thing to do is to glue together three triangles. Here's the third triangle. So here's one dot. Here's the next number, which would be a row of two for each of those triangles. Here's the next number, it's row three, row three, and then a row of three. Row four, row four, row four. And folks call these the pentagonal number. If you look in books, they sometimes try to draw a pentagon like that. So the Greeks called these the pentagonal numbers. Um, unfortunately, I'm gonna use P, but I'll use P subscript N for the nth pentagonal number, and we can see it's easy to get a formula. It's just actually three triangles glued together with a double count here and another double count. And if you do the algebra on this, this turns out to be uh, three times three n minus one all over two. All right. The reason I want to pull out the pentagonal numbers, oh, in fact, I'll maybe I should get the sequence. It goes one, and then what is it? Uh, five is the next pentagonal number, obviously, and then it's 12, and then 22. 
there's the sequence of pentagonal numbers. And the curious thing is, Euler found that these numbers appear in a recursive formula for the partition numbers. Actually, he found they occurred as every second term. He found in his sequence, which I'm about to give, in his formula I'm about to give in a moment, that there are other numbers involved. There was a 2 here, there was a, uh, let's see, a 7 here, a 15 here, and so on. That actually the numbers he found in his formula were what he called the generalized pentagonal numbers because they actually follow the formula 3 times 3n minus 1 over 2 is the pink, is the purple ones, or plus 1 and all that over 2 will give the green ones. So I've got all the numbers from 3 times 3n plus or minus 1 all over 2 appear in something remarkably curious. I think it's one of the most strangest results in all the mathematics about the partition numbers. I need to clean my board again. Now I'm going to give you Euler's result.